Today's video is all about how you can achieve your most flawless looking foundation you've ever had in just a few steps. And I'm going to show you every one of my tricks and tips that I do to get really beautiful foundation. Hello friends, I'm so glad that you're here with me today. We're gonna go over a ton of information about what you can do in order for you yourself to have your most flawless foundation. Now we're all different. We all have different concerns to our skin, but one of the main ones as we age is our pores get bigger, we get wrinkles and that kind of thing, and that can mean that we have more texture on our skin and our foundation doesn't quite look the way we want it to. So to be realistic, a a lot of that is we just have to work with what we have. I'm 54, so I know that my skin is not gonna be like somebody that's 24. That's okay, but I can do every step possible to make my foundation look as good as it can as a canvas for the makeup that I'm going to wear that day. So I've broken it down into five steps. A couple steps in here are encompassing more things than just one or two things, but you'll get it as we go along. Before we get started though, I'm gonna put a timestamp right here where you can skip over me talking about what I have on my jewelry and that kind of stuff. So go to this timestamp right now if you just want to skip over the intro. First of all, we always talk about what I'm wearing for the day. I'm wearing a tunic length shirt today. It has three buttons on the side that are a nice detail. It also can be pulled up so it can ruch around the stomach a little bit and it isn't over the shoulder. I today have a black bra on because I wanted to be lazy and didn't want to wear my strapless bra. It's a nice weight, kind of a medium knit jersey. Comes in a bunch of different colors. It's going to keep you warm enough as we go into late fall and winter. And then I also have a really cute jewelry set on today. It is dragonfly earrings and the dragonfly pendant to match. It is set in silver but I don't think that this is 925 silver. I would say that this necklace is probably about 18 inches. And I really just love both of them. I think they're so pretty. All of the makeup, the jewelry, the fingernail polish, everything will be listed and linked down below. I also have a numbering system. I'll put up a three right here on the screen, which that is to tell you what product we're talking about at that minute. So you don't have to remember the name of the product or the color or anything like that. You just look for the number that corresponds to that. So if we're on number three, I'm going to be holding up a product. You go down and open up the description box, find number three. Next to it's going to be the name of the product and the link, and you can shop that way if you'd like to. Okay, that's the total sum of our introduction. We're going to get into me with a bare face and the five steps that you can do to make your foundation look absolutely flawless, 10 years younger, beautiful skin at any age. Let's get into it right now. Okay, step one. You have to exfoliate, and I exfoliate every single morning. I am right now using up the micro delivery exfoliating wash from Philosophy Beauty. I like this a lot because the granules in it or the, the actual exfoliating part in it is very, very fine. Now, when I do my exfoliating, I'm gonna really pay attention to the parts that I know really have a lot of texture on them, which is my chin, this chin crease right here, right into the nose, on the nose, and in the forehead, little bit on the cheeks. And then just a warm washcloth, and I'm gonna go ahead and just very gently, I'm not doing a lot of scrubbing, now, if you have places where you feel like there is a lot of dead skin, go ahead and get a little rougher with them, but you don't want to cause tears in your skin. You're just wanting to take off whatever is dead on top. So step number one to having the most beautiful foundation you've ever had is definitely exfoliating in the morning. Step number two to help you achieve the most flawless foundation you've ever had is shaving your face. Now, I know that this is not for everybody because a lot of people get very nervous with it. I use the little straight razors that are the tinkle razors that you get off of Amazon. They're very inexpensive. I don't use these like over and over again. I use them maybe three or four times because they do get dull quite quickly and you don't want to damage your face Again, we're looking for smooth canvas, not anything too roughed up. Now you may not wanna do these two steps together. You might wanna do them on separate days. I exfoliate every day, but I only shave probably once every other week. I don't shave every day. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly. I'm not gonna show you a complete demo, but I'll show you really quickly what I do. I make sure that I go up here and try not to get these little hairs that are up here in my hairline. You just go the same way that the hair grows along your face and you're just getting very gently, you're not 
you know pushing a lot or anything like that because the razor can do most of the work so just a couple of tips if you're going to shave your face always go in the direction uh, that your hair grows that helps not get too much exfoliating and not rough up the skin the other thing that it does is it will help as the hair grows out it's going to be kind of cut on a slant the hair will be and so it will grow in a little bit finer as it comes back in also make sure that you really pull tight the skin that you're going to be shaving across i have a lot of lax in my skin and if i were to just go over it without pulling anything then i wouldn't get all of the hair and i might cut myself so be careful with that and just practice a couple of times and i can assure you that this makes a huge difference in how your makeup will lay on your face when you have no hair that is causing more texture okay the third thing that you can do to make sure that your foundation is as flawless as possible is after you've done your skincare usually I let my skincare sit for about 10 to 20 minutes and sink in and that does include the SPF that I put on at the last but I've found through the years that if I have too many layers on and I put a lot of layers on if you watched my last couple videos they can not all be sinking in completely so you're left with your skin being quite tacky which is not necessarily a bad thing especially if you're like me and you have very dry skin but you do want to address that. So what I do is I just take a plain tissue. This is when I feel like my skin is just overly moisturized and it might break through just a little bit. So then I'm going to take this tissue and I'm just going to just blot everywhere. You can take a single ply if you want to. It really doesn't matter. Blotting is going to take up the excess moisture, yes, but it's also not going to take up too much moisture. Do you really want to think about that? Because what's going to happen is if you go in with your foundation, it might not look as good if you have too much skincare on it. It just creates more layers and it could possibly create more texture. Through now, watching Wayne Goss's videos for so many years, I've learned so many things, not necessarily about products, but about application. So I'm going to suggest to you a couple of products. These are kind of my holy grail products as far as my mature skin and what how they perform. So this is the Revlon Photo Ready Prime Plus Perfecting and Smoothing. I feel like this acts so much like the new Hourglass. I think it's, I don't think it's called Mineral Veil. I think it's called something else. Anyway, one thing that you want to do, this is all about application, this particular part of it. Okay, so you want to really push that primer into the areas where you have those large pores because the large pores are what's going to cause texture so take a little bit of extra time and just push your primer into there now this particular primer sinks in so quickly and it's absolutely lovely and so you're not left with a bunch of texture because it's already doing its job and it's already smoothing i can already feel that it's creating that beautiful barrier between my moisturizer and my foundation and that's what we want more than anything i'm going to let that set for a minute or so and then i'm going to go in with some loose powder you can use pressed powder whatever powder you like it really doesn't matter this is another tip that wayne taught on his channel and that is right now before you put on your foundation go in with a little bit of powder and i'm not talking a lot of powder i'm talking a fairly light dusting this is from house laboratories this powder is phenomenal i cannot put it down i've used it ever since i got it three weeks ago and i just love it so i'm not picking up any extra product. I'm just really dusting this around my skin to kind of, again, we're filling in the pores. We're taking out any texture. The other thing that this powder is going to do, it's going to help you not have to use so much foundation to cover, which is another reason that you might be getting texture on your skin. And yes, I know it seems very backwards, but trust me, I've been doing this for such a long time and it works just fantastic. And so many women have said the same thing. Now, another thing that I learned from him is that any brush that you do use to put your foundation on might cause micro exfoliating. So for a woman that is my age, 54, I choose to use a Dampen Beauty sponge. These are really inexpensive. They're from Shop Miss A, and I'll make sure that I link them for you, but they're very, very inexpensive. The next trick is one that I kind of developed on my own, not really from anybody. This is Max Fix Plus. You can use any primer spray. You don't want to use a setting spray, but you can use any primer spray on the market. 
market. It doesn't matter whether it's drugstore or this just happens to be my favorite. And I spray my sponge just a couple times. It doesn't have to soak it. It just has to be a little bit more wet with the primer. And then I feel like it really is important to use the right foundation for you. One of my very favorite foundations of all time is the number seven Lift and Illuminate Triple Action Serum Foundation. I have used this for years. I've talked about it for years on my channel. It is a fantastic foundation, especially if you're older and do have texture. And what I'm doing today is I'm mixing two colors because one is just way too light for me. I'll make sure that I list both of those down below for you. Now, I try to really stick to begin with with just one pump. If you start out smaller you can always put more on but if you put more on it's harder to take away and so all i do is just bounce or push in that foundation now this step is where your time comes in this is very time consuming any makeup artist that you sit down in their chair and they do your makeup they take a ton of time to blend your concealer and your foundation out and to blend your eyeshadow out and you will find that that is the bulk of what you need to be doing as well so promise me no skipping on this part no skimping whatsoever the other thing that's going to make you look flawless and make you look really really good is to take that foundation clear down your neck. Now, I know that a lot of women ask me over and over again, how do you keep this off of your clothes? I actually don't. I don't mind it because I feel like this step of putting it clear down my chest into my decollete and covering up as much of this area that is so sun damaged, this gives you a flawless look. So this probably besides application, number five is to put that foundation all the way down your neck and your decollete. It is so, so important. Put it clear out on your ears. And yes, I'm gonna be careful not to get it on my earrings. Put it clear out on your ears. Put it all the way around your neck. What people will notice and what they will see is this flawless look from the top to the bottom. And I promise you that this is going to make a huge difference. If you have been somebody that has not done your chest, you've just stopped maybe at your neck right here and not done your chest that shows you really truly will look younger and you will look more flawless if you bring all of that foundation all the way down it it helps so much so i don't know if you can see or not but this is looking really good it's a beautiful foundation i absolutely love it next i'm going to be putting on my sephora best skin ever concealer and i'm going to do that right now i have yeah. people that watch me put my concealer on and they think i'm insane for using so much I do have a video on that too on how I have really changed my thinking about concealer and the way that I do it Which I will list for you below, but it really does work for me and it covers finally after 50 plus years it covers the hollows and everything and it just works so so well for me now I want you to come as close as you possibly can I want you to see I don't have perfect skin. I still have texture Let me turn down my light so that you can see I still have texture. I still have a lot of wrinkles in this area. There, I have bigger pores. It's not easy to get rid of these, but this is making the most out of what you have. So if you do have large pores, don't feel bad that your skin doesn't look like everybody's that's on YouTube. That's because a lot of times we have these lights on that really do diffuse a lot of the imperfections but it also is so much about application. I do get a lot of people compliment me when I'm out in natural light on what my skin looks like. So that's really nice to hear. So I must be doing something okay, but it truly is a lot of the lights that we have here in our studios. All right, now I'm not going to set my under eyes with powder. That makes it look too dry. Again, that's going to make your foundation not look quite as flawless. So I'm going to use a setting spray. This one is the Flower Beauty Seal the Deal Hydrating Setting Spray. I'm going to spray the end of my sponge just lightly and then I'm going to just dot you have all seen me do this just very lightly across my concealer this is how I set it and then I decide whether or not I need to go back in and use powder I'm going to go in now with that powder from house laboratories and I'm going to use my fluffy brush by the way this is an it brush for Ulta that you can get I will make sure that you, I link it below it's one of my favorite big huge brushes it's not inexpensive but it's so worth it so I'm picking up again some powder gonna just swirl that in the lid so that it distributes through the brush and then I'm going to just very lightly 
just dust over these areas that we were talking about that have the most texture. I'm just really buffing all of this powder into those areas. And then whatever's left on my brush, I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna lightly dust over the whole entire rest of my face. So that is a setting powder. If you want a finishing powder, Hourglass has their finishing powder, the ambient finishing powders, they're so good. So I will just go into these two. This is the new butterfly palette. I'll just go into these two. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna finish off everything and this is not necessary you do not need to use two powders at all but sometimes i just like the way it looks now i'm going to take the edge of the brush and i'm going to go down into that powder and i'm going to just barely set those under eyes since we did just put powder on let's go ahead and just put some of the setting spray on to melt all the powder and the foundation together Take your original sponge and just go over everything and you can turn it to a clean spot and just go over everything and make sure that it's all put together. I'm gonna go off camera, I'm gonna do the rest of my face and I'll be back with you and we'll chat a little bit about everything. So this is the final look with the rest of my makeup on. I hope that you did enjoy the video. I appreciate you being here with me and if you're brand new, make sure that you subscribe. Everybody, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, that really does help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Make sure that you leave a comment in the comment section down below if you do anything different or you use a product in a different order or anything let me know how your foundation routine is going and i'd love to hear that from you i hope that you're all happy and healthy and taking care of yourselves i love you so very much come back around we'll be together very soon take care bye-bye friends